Reloaders and shooters out there, Fortune Cookie 45LC coming to the hot lad zone. And as you recall, we went out to Manteca to visit the Bass Pro Shop out there. And they didn't have any pistol powders, but here's a shotgun powder, very useful for pistol. So I picked up two pounds of Hodgdon HS6 out there. And it came to $31 and, and change per pound. So I got two pounds and uh, that will give me a, a chance to load up a, a good amount of pistol loads for the HS6. Nice thing about it is that we have some reloading data here that Hodgen provides for 9mm, 40 caliber, and 10mm auto. Plus there's some loads here that are adaptable for slugs. And uh, of course I will refer to the Lyman Reloading Shot Shell Handbook for verification on those, but uh, this is a useful powder. Today we're going to use this powder to load 45 now, Colt. HS6 is a slightly flattened spherical powder and it should meter very well so that the Hornady automatic powder dispenser should have no problem dropping the charges at a normal speed. Now for bullets we're going to use that Lee 200 grain tumble lube semi wad cutter and powder coated of course as you saw in the other video so we're going to load these bullets now for primers we're going to use these nice two ammo russian primers large pistol and you see they're all color coded according to the pellet so the large pistol standard primer this is not the magnum primer is this kind of a of a brownish pellet the russians produce very good small arms components and if you uh, haven't tried the Tula Ammo Primers, you might give them a try. They're very uniform, reliable, and uh, very reasonably priced. And I, I use them by the, um, usually buy about 10,000 primers at a time. Uh, never let me uh, down. For brass, I'm going to use mixed brass that was sent to me by 061000. That's uh, Lead Fly 7.62 by another name. And uh, of course, that's Dennis. So thank you very much again for the brass you sent me. There's he sent me about 200 rounds of 45 Colt brass, but he has some 44 Magnum, 44 Special, and turns out he has some 41 Magnum brass mixed into that. So he kind of warned me. So what do you do? Do you look at every one of them? Well, here's what you do. Also, when you inspect, can you see that there's a small one there? That one right there is a smaller case. Turns out that that one is a 44 Magnum case. Now when it comes to 45 Colt brass, you'll notice that you can actually see that there's a variation in the thickness of the rim there. So you mic this one and you get 0 .5, 0 .0545. You mic this one, you get 0.0505 so you see there's a difference in variation of the thickness of the rim and sometimes that causes problems coax priming system now I don't have any problems with this coax priming system for other calibers but because the 45 Colt has some variations in rim thickness when you put the 45 Colt rim in there the smaller rim sometimes will slip off or slip out of there when you're priming and that causes trouble for priming. So we're not going to use the coax priming system to do the 45 Colt. I'm going to use my RCBS bench priming tool that you've seen me use before. We'll, we'll show you that in a little and while. Once again, we're going to turn to our trusty Lee 4 die set to load the 45 Colt. It's got everything we need and more because of the, of the Lee factory crimp die. And that shell holder will come in very handy when we use the RCBS bench prime tool. Now the powder dipper, no, we're not going to use that because when you got a Hornady automatic powder dispenser, you're not going to be looking at dipping powder charges. So once again, we've used a little bit of 3-in-1 oil to lube the rams. And then we wiped off the excess so there's no mess. Ready to go ahead now with the next step. So the Lee Sizer die goes in and we start to resize the cases. Already adjusted, 
Lead dies are ready to go. So there you go. We've deprimed and resized the case. Now let's go ahead and run all 100 of those through there. As you can see, it doesn't have to be slow. So there's the sizing operation, and you can see it doesn't have to be slow. So thanks again to O61000 Dennis out there in Texas for sending me this brass. It was all cleaned already, and I've gone ahead and resized and decapped a hundred of them. And you're going to ask, well, did you clean the primer pockets? And the answer is no, I'm not going to clean them this time because we used to not clean them ever when we did our progressive press reloading. So uh, I will, in the future, decap and then wet tumble these to get them all clean, including the primer pockets. But for this run, I'm going to leave the primer pockets uncleaned. It'll cause no problem in the shooting. Now it's so nice of Tula to put their primers in this configuration in the boxes so that you put a flipper tray over it and then there they are all ready to load into your primer tube. So here's our primer tube and you see we go ahead and pick them up. Doesn't take long to load a primer tube as you see there. Now the RCBS bench primer tool will take Dillon primer tubes. Just make sure you have a bare end on it to go into the RCBS primer tool as you'll see. So you take your filled Dillon primer tube or RCBS primer tube and you simply take the flat end and insert it into the primer arm like so. Then you pull the pin and you're ready to go. When you activate the arm, it will put a primer into the primer cedar cup and then that should lower into the machine so that, like that, so you can put a case in. Now what happens is when you use these shell holders, sometimes they hang up a little bit. So you gotta tweak it a little bit, but it'll still work fine. If you use an RCBS, shell holder it's a uh, seamless it works perfect so a very nice feature of the RCBS primer tool bench primer tool is that you can feel each primer go right to the bottom of the primer pocket and actually square up in there flush up the sensitivity of this tool is remarkable there you see you actually felt it bottom out in the primer pocket. Not just one part of the primer, but the whole primer bottoms out. And it doesn't have to be, there you go, felt it. It doesn't have to be slow. Felt that. Felt that. Get that in focus so you can see what I mean. You see that primer is under the case head and it's just perfectly in there no damage to the primer at all just like factory there you go all perfectly primed cases I won't show you the other 50 but one thing that's for sure all of you who have 454 Casul shooters out there if you get 454 Casul mixed up with your 45 Colt this will bring operations to a grinding halt because the 454 Casul takes small rifle primers no way you're going to jam a large pistol primer in there. So next we take out the Lee resizing die and put in the Lee neck expander mouth flaring die. And that should be already adjusted. So let's see what happens when we give it a little bit of action there. So there it is. And we need a little more mouth expansion, so we advance the die in the die lock ring just a little bit. 
do that again. See if a bullet will go in. And there it is. Just a hair more. And we should be in business. There it is. The bullet is entering the case mouth. Show that to you again. Now we'll just go ahead and run all 100 cases through that die. So now the powder charging. We will enter 13.8 grains into the target. Then when we hit dispense and it's set on slow, let's see if we get a charge that's over. Now you notice it went over. And that's because the grains are so small that it dispenses it too fast and you get a overcharge. Well, so let's put the back button to clear the target. Well, first we got to clear that. Press the back button. Okay, we've cleared the, the, the target. Now it won't throw a charge. So to get this to work out properly, we have to slow down the trickle speed. And the way you do that is you hold the calibrate button down and it'll go into trickle speed set mode. There it is, set. Now you use these two buttons to set the trickle speed. So this one, there's point three, now we want to go down. So there's point two. That's the trickle speed. And we hit the back button to lock that trickle speed into memory. Then we hit the mode button, and what that does is it'll give us the point at which the trickle starts. We want that point to be a little earlier. So we hold this down, and you get two, four, six, and then eight. So point eight grains is where we want that. Now that rolled it over the manual. We want that back on auto. So there it is. The mode button put it back on auto. Now the target needs to be set, so there's 13.8 grains. Put the enter button to get that in the target, and then press dispense. Now it'll dis dispense 13.8. Now watch, it'll slow down the trickle early. There it is. 0.8 grains early. Now it's trickling slowly to 0.8. There it is. Now it'll, it'll say it'll stop and that's the, the charge. So did you see how that happened? When it hit 13, it's, it went into trickle because we set it at, at 0.8 grains early of what we wanted. Well, that makes it 13 because 13.8 minus 0.8 is 13. Then it trickled slowly to get to 13.8 and then it gave us the charge. So I'll use my trusty Texan funnel that's only about 35 years Let's old. See that again, there's 13.8 charge. We'll put it into a case, put the pan back on, and it'll throw another charge. So it'll slow down around 13. There it goes. And then it'll slowly trickle up to 13.8. Now, if a big glob of powder breaks loose, you'll go over 13.8. And if that happens, you'll get an overcharge. Then we put the soda straw in. Well, we don't need to do that because there you see, 13.8. Got a good charge. We'll go ahead and put that into the case. Throw another charge. And there is the powder into the case. And there it is. So you see the, the Hornady unit works very nicely. You don't get too many overcharges. Out of a hundred you might get two or three overcharges. The rest of them are all good. So now let's go ahead and go into bullet seating. Back to the coax press and we'll take out the expander die and we'll put in 
the cedar dye. Now the cedar dye and the factory crimp dye look very similar, but you can tell the cedar dye because it has a little taper on the mouth. Plus, there is no carbide insert. The carbide insert is on the Lee factory crimp dye. So, tapered bottom and no carbide insert. This is the cedar dye. We'll put it in and go ahead and adjust the bullet seating. Take a powder charge case. We got a bullet sitting in the case mouth that's been flared and we put that into the die and we feel that start to seat the bullet and you see because we're doing a different bullet it's very easy to over seat the bullet we have it right where we want it right on that last top tumble loop groove so we'll back out the stem we'll put that in again ah we got a little bit still got a little bit of seating going on there now we got it all the way down we'll put the seating stem back down to touch the bullet. There it is. That means every time you see the bullet now, it'll seat it to that amount of seating. And that's what we want. Now we don't want to crimp with this die because we want to use a factory crimp die to, to crimp. Notice that this bullet is in there cockeyed. We don't really want that for best reloading practices you want that fairly square. It can be off a little bit, but you don't want it off by a lot. So you see, there you go. Go ahead and seat that. And there you have a nicely seated round. Right where the top of the crimp groove, the top crimping groove, or the top tumble loop groove is. So we'll go ahead and do another one for you to see. So again, powder charge case fairly straight seat the bullet and there you have it show you another one after a while the squareness of the bullet going on the case mouth, you can actually feel it with your finger. You don't even really need to see it. So for instance, I'm not looking and then I let go and you see that's pretty straight. Now we'll use the Lee factory crimp die to crimp them all, but for now let's go ahead and seat all the bullets. So what you want to do is get a rhythm going where the automatic powder dispenser by Hornady throws a charge and then you go ahead and take that charge pour it into a case pour it into a case as you see here Put the pan back on the Hornady automatic powder dispenser so that it'll throw another charge. And then while it's throwing that charge, you see the charge is in the case, you go ahead and put the bullet on top. So you see that beep, it already put the next charge up. Seat the bullet.